In this video, we are going to talk about the modulation property of Fourier transform. And we would do so by means of an application of AM, that is amplitude modulated signal, AM radio broadcast. Let us say there is a regulatory authority. that has some available uh, spectrum and that spectrum is from 560 kilohertz to say 1600 kilohertz so this is the spectrum of am radio signals that you receive in your vehicles or in the radio devices in this band we have specifically a station let us call this as station a and this station is operating at 560 kilohertz that is this station owner has bought the spectrum from this regulatory authority and then this station can transmit its information over the air so let us visualize one uh, studio environment so we have a studio environment In the studio room, we have a speaker and then we have a mic. So let us call the signal which is impinging on the microphone. Let us call this as S of T. So in time domain, we have a signal which is dependent on the oscillations of the diaphragm in this microphone. And for that, S of T may have this kind of a waveform. Now, if we take the Fourier transform of this signal, so we will get the spectrum of our audio signal, that is this signal, and that spectrum, let us call this as S of F. And that spectrum usually starts from around 20 to 100 hertz and it goes until 4 kilohertz so time domain signal and the frequency domain signal so right now the spectrum is available in this range which cannot be transmitted over the air and the station a has bought the spectrum near 560 kilohertz from the regulatory authority so it needs to convert this signal this spectrum to 560 kilohertz so this can be done by including a modulator we have a multiplier and that multiplier is multiplied with a carrier signal c of t and this is simply cos 2 pi and the frequency that we need is 560 kilohertz so this is 2 pi 560 kilohertz so in time domain this signal c of t is simply a cos function that is oscillating at 560 kilohertz so the spectrum for this function c of f is simply an impulse at plus and minus 560 kilohertz so the source signal multiplied by the carrier signal and this process is called modulation and over here we have the component signal let us call this component signal as z of t and this signal is simply the message signal s of t which is coming from here multiplied by c of t that is the carrier which is cos 2 pi 560 kilohertz so in time domain z of t would have an envelope of this shape that is you would have an envelope
and within this envelope we would have this carrier so this is our z of t in time domain so that is this defines the amplitude and this defines the oscillation within the envelope which is over here now what would be the spectrum of this signal that is z of f let's try to find that and that is basically the concept of modulation and the modulation property now say we have z of t that is s of t cos omega naught t that is 2 pi f naught t so this is our new modulated signal z of t and we are interested in z of omega so as per the definition of Fourier transform so we have an integration from minus infinity to infinity z of t e to the power minus j omega t dt so hence we would have a minus infinity to infinity s of t and from here we are going to break it down into exponentials by means of Euler's identity so we would have a 1 by 2 and then e to the power j omega naught t plus e to the power minus j omega naught t and then this would be multiplied by this function that is e to the power minus j omega t dt so let us break the integration into two parts So over here s of t was original signal in time domain and we are multiplying it with an exponential and this forms the new time domain signal s of t multiplied by an exponential we are taking the Fourier transform of this signal so from the frequency shifting property so this is simply s of omega minus omega naught and we have a 1 by 2 over here similarly this is simply in the frequency domain s of omega plus omega naught so as this is the modulation property that we have derived over here and reflecting it on the transform so we simply have a frequency whereby this s of f is now shifted to 560 so that is we have a 560 kilohertz and a minus 560 kilohertz and at these two points we have this signal that is we have this signal so the time domain interpretation and its frequency domain interpretation of the modulated signal so it started in the studio with the speaker having a low frequency signal which is modulated to high frequency by means of the oscillator which is operating at cos 2 pi and the intended station frequency which is 560 kilohertz in our case and over here we have the modulated signal uh, which is represented in the time domain as well as in the frequency domain so after that we can have an amplifier and then we can transmit it by means of an antenna over the radio channel so on the receiver side you have the exact opposite process that is again you have an antenna and the transmitted signal is received so you have received z of t let's call that z hat of t because there would be some noise involved now and then this signal is modulated again and we have a multiplication and an oscillation that is an oscillator which is again operating at cos 2 pi 560 kilohertz and after that we use a low pass filter because we are interested in the frequencies which are not more than 4 kilohertz and then we would eventually find s hat of t 
that is an estimate of the original signal which was sent and then this s hat of t is actually put on a speaker anyway it comes so for this we have low frequency and usually we call this as baseband and over here we have high frequency and usually we call this as pass band band you would observe that the bandwidth of this signal is simply roughly 4 kilohertz so the bandwidth of pass band signal is over here we would have 564 kilohertz and over here we have 556 kilohertz so the bandwidth of pass band signal is 8 kilohertz with the center frequency at 560 kilohertz so we are going to learn more about this in the other course that is communication systems